So let's get this started. All right. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us here for the closing talk of our the Claire DJ conference, graduate conference. Uh, it's been quite the success. I'm, I have to say I'm very happy with the turnout and the diversity of talks that we've had. The workshops have been fantastic. So, and, and all this is made possible by everybody attending. So if with, you know, without the attendance, you know, we'd be just stuck here talking to ourselves probably about the Royals or something to that effect. So um, <laughs> with that said, um, I will um, like to first start off with the land acknowledgement. So I would like to take the opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territories of the people of Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy comprising of the Siksika, Picuni, and the Kinney First Nations, as well as the Sutina, First Nation and the Stony Nakoda, including the Chiniki, Bears Paw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary also is home to the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. I also would like to thank the Calgary Institute of Humanities for helping with the sponsorship of this closing talk by Marina Fisher. Also Craig, which is the Classics, Religion, Anthropology, and Archaeology Interdisciplinary Group, as well for their contribution to help support this conference and talk. Um, so, without further ado, um, today's talk is uh, presented by Marina Fisher, a collection specialist for the news, numismatics at the Nickel Galleries, University of Calgary. She holds an MA in ancient history with a specialization in art history from the University of Calgary, and her research focuses on ancient Greek and Roman coinage. She oversees a vast collection of 23,000 objects spanning from the beginning of coinage in the 7th century BCE to modern period, including Greek, Roman, and Byzantine, medieval, Islamic, and modern currencies. She's a recipient of the 2018 University of Calgary Teaching Award and lectures frequently in various departments across the ca campus. I am very honored to introduce her. She's a good friend, great mentor to me, and uh, welcome to the talk. Take it away, Marina. Oh, and one other thing, um, at the end of the talk, we will have a Q&A session. Um, for those who do not want to be recorded or have their voice recorded, please submit your questions through the Q&A component at the bottom of your Zoom screen. For those who want, would just wish to speak and don't mind being recorded, you can raise your hand and then I will uh, let you know when you can ask your question. Thank you very much. Thank you again, everyone, for inviting me. I'm really, really excited to share all of my insights, wisdom that I accumulated over the years. and. Um, Yesterday we talked about public outreach, and today I want to share uh, on that relevancy topic, specifically a numismatics case study. So how do we make classics relevant today? I'm going to talk very briefly about these things, and I will tell you from my personal experience what, what I have done, what I have experienced, how things have gone, what I've learned. So start small and very local, give lots of talks everywhere, surprising connections, do the odd stuff, never forget the kids, Calgary Numismatic Society, Canadian Royal Numismatic Association, Classics and Religion Department, exhibitions, social media, and I will end a little bit on media in general. So start small and very local. So what does that actually mean? When I when I was very, in 2017, oh sorry, in 2014, I was very fortunate to to get this position at the University of Calgary at Nickel Galleries. And I, I received the keys literally to the, to the numismatic room. There were millions of boxes in the room in the center. And it was like, okay, do it, whatever you like. So I organized the room and you can see, this is a really clean version of it. And I sat in that basement where the room is buried under the six floors of our libraries and cultural resources building. The vault is right there on the left. You can see it. My desk is on the right. And I was like, okay, what, what am I going to do here? I can sit down here in the basement. I can completely be forgotten by cataloging and researching the collection and even publishing and all of that. But what does that actually mean for me? What does that actually mean for the collection? So I decided to take a very different approach. I decided to make this collection 
visible, to bring it back up to the open, to open the access to engage public with the collection, both campus community and the wider community. So I started very small and very local, as I said. I started with the people I work with. I created little sessions. We had some talks during lunchtime that they were organized at the library. And I did introduction to the numismatics area. And that's what happened. That's how it started really, really small. And I think it's also really important to connect with your colleagues in the department where you work because very often people actually have no clue what anybody else does. So that's what I did. I, co I really connected with my own colleagues within the museum. I connected with my own colleagues within the library and I started from there. So the next step was, okay, how do I make this collection more visible? How do I connect with the outside world? So I decided, okay, let's give a lot of talks everywhere. And I started all kinds of stuff. This is one of the talks I've given for anthropology and archaeology department. I've given talks when I had two people. I've given talks when I had 80 people. But usually when I start with the new locations, new areas, new departments, it gets really small. But what I also made a point yesterday is do your absolute best. Whether you have two people in the audience, whether you have 800 people in the audience, do your absolute best. And that's exactly what I've done. And then it really started snowballing from there. I started accepting all kinds of invitations and things that didn't make even any sense, but I was like, okay, let's do this. The thing with the collection that we have at the Nickel, those 23,000 objects that we have, the core of the collection is ancient Greek and ancient Roman coins. However, there are a lot of objects in the collection that are outside of that scope. So I've decided to also dig deeper into some of the topics that I knew nothing about and to, knew, to learn enough that I can actually connect with the objects and that I can connect that knowledge with appropriate communities. So this, this is what I've done. I've done talks for art department where I talked about art and money in the 21st century. I've loved to connect with students. So I've done coffee chats. This is just a few things that I've done. I've done luncheons for seniors in ch local churches. And it, those, those events are quite interesting because you show up, there are people there and mostly they show up because they get free lunch. But again, I give it my own best. And what I've learned from these events is that you ne never know who is in the audience. You never know who you're gonna meet. And that's exactly what happened. I met future donors, I met future supporters, and then many people who really enjoy it start to come to the other events. I've connected with all kinds of societies that we have in Calgary and beyond Calgary. I also connected with the philosophy department. There is a wonderful professor, Dr. David Dick, who does philosophy of money. We organize conferences and events and talks, and also obviously with the classics department, which is really my home. That's how I, I, I really see it. That's how I feel. We've done numerous talks for the Calgary Public Library. This is the latest series that the department had done and the talk that I gave in February as well. So how does this work with students? In Before pandemic, I would go into classrooms and I would take coins with me. I would give brief lectures on relevant topics and then I would bring some coins with me and then I would let students look at them, handle them in smaller groups, and so on. Because when I inherited that collection, one of my main goals was to open up that collection for research. So to find a balance between access and security. And I feel that I have been able to accomplish that. Now, in a different situation that we are in, I've decided to not give up and to take my lectures and my interactions with students, all of the engagement online. And then just recently I was looking at something and realized that students are actually watching these presentations. 
which brought me to the point that I needed to put some stats together. And especially for this talk, I've decided this was a perfect opportunity to do that. So here are some of the stats from 2017 to the, to the present day. The public talks that I have given, 31. Class lectures, 80. Conferences, 10. Zoom views that I've just calculated right before the conference, because like, what the heck, let's check that out. Over 1,000. And then I also looked at the number of students that I was able to engage in classes, which is over 8,000 students in just a few short years. And that is really the goal. Go out there and engage with public and share the knowledge and share the collections. What I also discovered is that through the networking and through the connections and through being open, I was able to gain very surprising connections. So here are just a few. For some, in, in some way, strange way, I was able to connect with the Calgary Stalag Spark Science Center. And they have these really interesting events. Every month they have something called the adult only night. And they had a night where they focused on money. And interestingly, I actually met the organizer of that talk at my art department talk when I talked about art and coins in the 21st century. So that's how I landed there. It was an incredible night. It is it's hard to have all the photos for everything you do. And I do encourage everyone for your engagements, try to get as many photos as possible. Keep your stats, keep your receipts. It's really important. It will be handy in the future. That evening alone, I talked to over 300 people. It was absolutely incredible engagement. It was so successful that they invited me to come the following year where they had another adult night, which was called Urban Survival. So they emailed me about that and Urban Survival. And I was like, okay, whatever, let's, let's come up with something. There's always a way to, to find a connection. So that's what I did. This was the table I brought and it was, it was amazing. People had a lot of fun. And unfortunately, I don't have time to go into many of the things, but yes, these are carrots that I had there. And I talked about a barter and all kinds of things. What do we do in the time of apocalypse? We also done some really strange things, and I'm really grateful to my colleagues, Marika Cassis, Amber Porter, Leslie Bolton, and myself. We participated in this really bizarre event, which was organized by Life Sciences Innovation Hub. And we went there and we gave a classics and entrepreneurship workshop. It was incredible. It was absolutely amazing experience. And we connected with people that otherwise we would never ever even dream of. And I also find that it's really interesting how all of these events have the lure of food, like free food. Please come, just uh, we'll, we'll feed you. The next thing I wanna talk about is the odd stuff. And that's what I encountered in my job. There were a lot of different events happening and a lot of different directions that I could have taken. And one of them was engagement with the campus public art. Under the Nickel Galleries uh, comes the campus public art, but there is nobody really designated to deal with public art. I felt a moral obligation to do something about this and to get involved with it in some way. So um, I did my best and I participated in Jane's walks. So these are the walks around the city that happen on the first weekend in May. They, they are global events. So I organized the public campus art walk. This was the first year that I did it. The following year, we already had a lot more participants. I've done it since every year and it's been absolutely amazing. And what I've decided to do and what actually came the easiest to me was to look at the art that was there, choose the pieces, especially that I can connect to my background, to classics, to neoclassicism, and so on. And on the other side, I learned a lot about other things that I did not know. There were newspaper articles, I've done um, university announcements and newsletters and all kinds of stuff came out of there. I've also done something we call alumni weekends. University celebrates alumni um, in September. 
So I, somebody who attended one of my talks thought it would be a good idea. So we connected and I created a special exhibition for that particular weekend. They asked me for the following year and afterwards, I now participate every, every year in this alumni weekend or alumni month, which has now become. And again, the connections that were made and engagement that happened was truly rewarding and a lot of stuff comes out of there. Another thing that I got involved to was organizing talks. So the classics department has the public outreach group, which is called Friends of the Mediterranean Studies. And I involved with my colleagues, um, together with my colleagues from the department, we organize the talks and invite the public and the alumni to these talks. And they're really well attended. This is one of the talks by Dr. Matthew Lohr, who ended up talking about coins. And anytime that happens, I was able to bring some coins and put them on the display in the room to complement the talk. And speaking of coins, I do want to share this information for those of you that are here right now, because I'm extremely excited uh, for the talk by Dr. Amelia Dower from the British Museum. She will be giving a talk at Nickel at Noon online that we do every Thursday. So this would be April the 8th at noon. The links are on our website, nickel.ucalway.ca. Um, please check it out. We are extremely excited and pleased to have her. The kids. That is a really important topic and something that is often forgotten in academia. But I will do the cliche and say kids are the future because they really are the future. So how did that work for me? I am, I am not a, a kids person. I am not a teacher. I am, I am not anybody to whom this comes naturally. It was a struggle. Even talking about it is a struggle. But I decided that this was extremely important and that I needed to do something about it. So I reached out to the Calgary Public Library's branches and offered to, to do sessions on the history of money. And I started in one, one branch. The following year, I did a few other branches. And I was planning to do a lot more when everything got put on pause. It is really hard to get photos of children and that's one of the things that I really miss doing with all of these privacy laws is taking photos of people at the events. But I try to do my best. And here are just a few shots from the library event. Uh, there were 50 children in this session and they were actually uh, full, which excited me tremendously because I was able to connect with these kids. And I was also able to connect with the parents who brought the kids, which is another interesting opportunity. For this coming summer, we've decided to offer a university summer camp. For those of you that don't know, we have incredible summer camp program. There are over, I think there are over 30 programs and they're always full. So this year we decided to offer our own summer camp. And I'm not 100% sure how this is all going to look like, but I am very, very excited about it. I'm really excited to connect with these kids. We will be doing great from four to six, and we will be adjusting the programming. By the way, the university <laughs> summer camp mascot is absolutely frightening. The next was reaching out to the community in Calgary. So looking who is who loves coins? Who collects coins? Who is engaging with coins? And I stumbled across this Calgary Numismatic Society. They did have a connection with the university in the past with the previous curator, Geraldine Shamiri Russell. I knew a little bit about that, but Geraldine retired a long time ago and the connection was completely lost. So I decided that it was time to find out what was happening there and to see if there was any interest and to see if there was any mutual benefit that we can all experience from this uh, connection. And it did, it, it was, it was absolutely incredible. I was received with open arms. We've done so much collaboration. We've done incredible things and a few that I will mention right now. One of the members of the society is Robert Cocotelo, who has his own shop in Calgary, and he, he's been in the business for over 40 years. He's an incredible encyclopedia of numismatics. And anytime I need an answer to a question, I just email him and he knows everything about everything. So it was an it's, he's an incredible resource to me. He's also on our committees. 
uh, collection committees, acquisition committees, and different um, areas that we have and different engagements that we have in the museum. Plus also being able to help me acquire new artifacts for the collection. That connection with the society led to the wider connection can Canada-wide with the Royal Canadian Numismatic Association because each, each society belongs under the umbrella of our CNA. And that started uh, quite quickly and it snowballed into a huge event when in 2019, the Calgary Association, sorry, the Calgary Society uh, hosted the RCNA convention, which is a huge, huge event. And I decided to somehow be in the center of all of this. I got involved with organizing it. I also um, um, curated a special exhibition for that particular event. Uh, we had it all spring and summer. It was absolutely incredible. We were able to engage not only with the local community, but also with the wider Canadian community and uh, many US um, visitors as well. Here is just a shot of one side of the, of the exhibition that um, we did for that particular event. And then I connected with all of these people, the senior leaders of the associations, gave talks, got involved with different projects, and so on. They like to make it really official, and I just had a blast. I also organized for the convention this particular event, which was um, Numismatic Educational Event, sponsored by Canadian Association for Numismatic Education. And that was an incredible event as well, being able to connect with uh, numismatists and uh, collectors across Canada and US. What came out of this was truly incredible because one of our past supporters and donors, George Mance, decided to give us part of his collection, which also included the Yapstone money. And I was very excited about this because the only other example in Canada is located in the Museum of Bank of Canada in Ottawa. And that is on the completely other side of uh, Canada, not really accessible to us. So to have something on the Western side of Canada was absolutely exciting to me and being able to work with that material as well. And then this happened out of all of this. Uh, now I'm the director of the youth club and I designed this banner and I'm so, so excited about it. I haven't been able to have any session with the, with the kids yet, but I do have a huge list of children that were very interested in having this. So as soon as we get a green light, this will be happening. Closer to home is the classics and religion department. As I said, this is my home. I did my BA and my uh, MA in the department. And when I, when I went to do, when I went back to do my MA, I had already known about the collection. I had already volunteered with the collection. I worked with a previous curator and I knew right away that this is what I wanted to do. So when I, when I organized my MA, I was, um, I was, I was permitted to have my practicum at the museum and I did all kinds of stuff with the collection and uh, with the curator at the time, which really uh, made a huge difference for me, obviously. And here I ended up with, uh, within that collect with that collection within the museum. And so this is why I really see this department as my base, as my home. And many of the professors and instructor in the department are still there uh, when I was the student. And I love connecting with everyone. And I have to say the department has been extremely welcoming and embracing the collection because I truly believe that this collection makes a huge difference for students that come to study at the University of Calgary in this particular department and beyond that department because I was able to connect with the arts department with the history department, economics department, philosophy department, even languages. So there are endless possibilities to work with this collection. But because of the collection being core ancient Greek and Roman, I really believe that this is the most important connection that has been established. And as I mentioned, the department and the students are absolutely incredible. Uh, this is from one of the Faculty of Arts fairs. Brittany Damone uh, presented the collection there. It was um, 
it was it was absolutely wonderful to be able to share that. I've also held many workshops, and here is one from 2019. We were organizing many more uh, were to come, so hopefully we will have more hands-on experience in such settings. They're saying September, so I really hope that that is that is the case. And then. There was a call, a university-wide, for internships. And a very long story short, I was actually able to receive the federal funding for this so-called transformative talent internship. And Brittany Damone, um, who I mentioned earlier as well, is the intern for the next, um, well, a few more months, but the internship is in total eight months. And it's absolutely incredible experience and incredible joy for me to be able to offer uh, such valuable um, skill building um, situation. Also the graduate practicums and undergraduate, undergraduate practicums. This is Scott, so now you all met Scott. He completed his graduate practicum with me, which is 80 hours, which is absolutely incredible. And I am looking forward to more students joining the program. We also offer internships through our Museum and Heritage Studies minor. And uh, so I had a lot of students in the past and I'm looking forward to many students that will come in the future. And then you really kind of hand over the baton like, and I'm so excited to share my personal um, enthusiasm about the, the coins, about the topic, how exciting the, the collection is. And then here is Scott's website that, he's, that he built and he talks about his experience working with a collection and he thoughts on the collections and so on. Another student is Stephen Mooney who just recently created the website where he's looking at different technologies and exploring coinage and so on. So I'm really, really excited about that project as well. Working with the students, I take that at every opportunity uh, possible. For that uh, Money in Calgary exhibition, I was able to partner with four students from the department and we co-curated uh, this collection. So this exhibition. So every student had a, a, a certain topic that they chose and they contributed their own cases in the exhibition. It was it was really thrilling to work with everyone. We what came out of that exhibition as well is the catalog that we all wrote together and uh, I'm extremely excited about it and I love sharing it with everyone because the images are incredible, the stories are incredible and that is something that I use as the material to, to educate and connect with the public about the collection and exhibitions that we have. And as you can see, I love turtles. Learning from students is something that I take very seriously. I have benefited so much from everyone that I've met, especially in the field of technology. The students are teaching me all this incredible stuff that is out there and I feel like 100 years old, but I'm absolutely excited to learn new things. And I have so many ideas what I wanna do with a collection in the future. And hopefully we will have the 3D models and we will be able to have a different database and connecting with wider numismatic communities. So that's all in the works. Exhibitions. Exhibitions are obviously really, really important. But anybody who has ever worked with coins knows that exhibiting coins is a very difficult task. So how do you do it to truly engage the public? That the visitors, when they come, they really experience the objects and they, they really learn from them and they feel enriched and better for that experience by coming into the museum. So this is uh, just a shot that I had because again, photographs are kind of scarce. There's not a lot of out there, but this is the one from the huge money exhibition that happened in 2000. So uh, how do we display coins? So how do we work with that? the artifacts and the coins and everything that is in the collection. And I decided to start small again. I wanted to do something in particular about in this window, the gallery window that we have in the hallway of the library. I 
was offered the, the space within the gallery, but I declined it because I honestly didn't think that anybody would come. I did not think that at that point there was enough knowledge about the collection that would really generate enough interest. So I decided to go small and to do smaller window exhibitions. So I was so, so excited about this. So this was the first exhibition from 2016. And uh, so money throughout the, uh, through the ages. And I've decided to pull out all of the showstoppers or many of the showstoppers that we have in the collection, create a narrative that people can connect with and so on, to, and to do it in an innov innovative way. The next exhibition I did the following year was this one as well in the window, because the first one was so successful and the reaction that we've received from the community on campus was absolutely incredible. And then through a lot, of, after a lot of, lot of thinking about how to display coins, how to engage people with these tiny little objects was to create these little stands with blown up images of the coins. And it was just so beautiful. And uh, I was really, really excited to do that. And the feedback that I received about the exhibition was really incredible. So that was in general, a particular like common day in the library. Uh, students stopping by to look at the coins. I would sometimes stand by the window during the busy hours and engage with them and explain the exhibition to them, answer their questions, give them the brochures and so on. It was, it was extremely, extremely um, rewarding experience. So here is from the next exhibition, what is, what is money? And again, the reaction to the exhibition was incredible. So over these few years, I was able to build up enough um, interest and enough knowledge about the collection, which then led to this larger exhibition that I've uh, shown you, Money in Calgary, because I knew by that point that I would be able to engage with public and that I, I knew that there would be audience coming to the exhibition. Also collaborating with um, colleagues within the museum and outside of the museum is extremely important. This was a collaboration with Dr. Maria Zuteruk who did an exhibition about the history of the book. And um, here is one of the cases with the coins where we connected the numismatic books in the special collections with the coinage that we have. Virtual exhibitions was something that I always wanted to do. But again, there's never enough time. How do we do this? Do we even have software? Do we have support? The answer is no. So how, how do we actually make this happen? And honestly, I do have to thank pandemic and this horrible time for making this um, materialize. I have to uh, give shout out to Brittany again, because she worked on this really, really hard and uh, listened to every question and comment and adjustments that I had, million emails. And as you can see, we were all super excited because my colleague, Michelle Hardy, who posts on the website, uh, was, so, <laughs> was so excited about the exhibition that she decided to put two exclamation marks after the word virtual. But if you check, if you have checked it out, uh, if you want to check it out, it's all on our website. The access is there. Um, the photography is really incredible. You can zoom in, zoom out. You can get all of the information. And the goal, really, for me personally, uh, of this exhibition was also sharing the collection with the public, making these images copyright free and free domain was really important to me, so that everybody can benefit from that. They can use them for their research, they can use them for their papers, for whatever uh, the coins are needed. I've learned that from the American Numismatic Society when they put their collection um, similarly up and made them free uh, for use. And I benefited incredibly for that, from that and I wanted to continue sharing that. Social media is the next thing, um, really interesting. I've never really been a social media person. I have the Facebook and had Facebook, Facebook account for many years, barely ever used it. 
But when all this went down, I've decided it was definitely a time to do something about this. So I opened my Twitter account. And you can see how I'm talking about this. I opened the Twitter. I don't know how you say it. I registered my Twitter account. Here we go. And it was it is incredible joy to post on Twitter, to engage with people, to meet new people who share similar interests, to meet professionals in the field is is absolutely amazing. And as you can see amazing and exciting are the words that I'm using over and over again in this presentation because I do not know how else to express my feelings uh, about all of these experiences. I will close with the media because that is really interesting and something completely new to me that I've experienced over the past few years. This is the latest uh, interview I've done for CBC. For those of you who may not know, CBC is a radio um, and TV broadcasting, um, very similar to BBC. I know, Amelia, you know BBC. So this is CBC, the Canadian uh, Broadcasting Corporation. It's a really, really big deal in Canada. So through many exhibitions that happened and different networking, they heard about the exhibition and they reached out to me a few times in the past. So this is the latest thing. We did a very short segment that they call Hidden Treasures and this was for Nickel Galleries and the, for the Numismatic Collection. They also have done different articles that they shared on their website and their social media. For, this was the very first exhibition, so that was 2016. I was really green. And they did actually film a, an interview with me, but I, I believe it was so atrocious, they were not able to use any footage. So there was absolutely no footage of me. They just, they just had a beautiful video of, um, of the coins in it. But it was a really interesting experience, and I've learned a lot from it. Because the next one that happened was in 2019, I was actually able to pull something that was... <laughs> marginally watchable, but I was really excited about it because they included it into their news, they included it in their social media, and it brought more visibility to the collection. Many other things happen, like the alumni newsletter that happen, that goes out all the time, the You Today stories that are emailed to university community every single day, sharing with everyone, and beyond that, the art gallery scene in Calgary. Um, this money is gas. I have no idea. I'm still absolutely puzzled, whatever that means. But I was stoked that they included the reference to the exhibition in this um, in this magazine. Gallery West is another place where a lot of listings happen, and I was included in that as well. The U Today uh, decided to do a story on the collection, and the, that that was done for the alumni weekend. Uh, now it's called Alumni Month. Because of the pandemic, they were not able to organize the programming, so they decided to film little videos. And they filmed the video of the collection and me, which I was actually finally getting to the point that I was like, okay, I think I can watch this. But as I said, all of this is a learning experience. And anytime they ask me, do you wanna do this? Are you feel, do you feel comfortable with this? I always say no, but I feel this is extremely important and I have a duty to the collection to do these things. And I will just learn and I will just get better. And that's generally the attitude I have towards everything. The last thing I wanna show you is one of my favorite articles. It was um, an interview by one of the visiting classic students, Francesca Chaplin, who did a beautiful story about um, the collection and about my personal history in numismatics and that is still available on their website. So that was something that really, really means a lot to me from a student perspective. Uh, that's how the article was written. And through all of this that I've shared right now and all of this experience and all of the years that I've been working with a collection and working with public, I, I know deeply within me that my calling is to make this collection visible. My calling is to educate about numismatics, to educate about the such collections, not just ours, but worldwide. I love research, I love writing articles, but again, if we live in our academic silo and nobody cares about these collections, nobody cares about the past, 
none of this is then relevant and it will disappear. And we are already seeing some consequences of our past actions. So this is why I truly feel this is an important calling that I have to do, that I have to promote numismatics, I have to promote our collection, and I have to promote uh, all of the studies that we have relevant to it. So thank you so much for listening to my talk. Uh, it, it is a true privilege for me to be able to share my experience um, with you. And I, I also love learning from others. I love, I love listening what other people are doing around the world. And I love learning from, uh, from them. So um, I hope that you have all enjoyed it. So thank you very much.